many people would say, my methodology is a grounded theory methodology. But there's an issue with that, because you always have to tell what version of grounded theory you're using. Because simply saying, I do grounded theory is not enough. Why? Because there's so many versions. In this lecture, I will talk about three different versions, and they all want to reach theory. And one version wants to do this by giving you clear steps to take in order to climb this mountain. Clear procedures, a recipe. Whereas another form, another version of grounded theory would tell you, well, just go about and climb and have fun. The third form of grounded theory would say, well, it depends on how you construct this mountain and you construct a certain route and this has effect on the way you climb. So there are different versions of grounded theory. How's that possible? Because we had this book, this 1967 book, in the summer of love. Well, love ended. Love ended not in 1978. In 1978, Glazer wrote a pretty small book on theoretical sensitivity. It's a great book. It's compelling and it's very interesting to read. And it's pretty difficult also. And it was an addition to the classical work of Blazer and Strauss together in how to go about interpreting, how to create a theory with many original ideas. In 1990, Strauss and Corbin wrote Basics of Grounded Theory Methods. And in this book, they gave some sort of recipe in order to do grounded theory methodology. Glazer read it and really, really disliked it. He wrote a book within two years. He wrote a book and he says, well, this is not what grounded theory is about. I demand that you withdraw this book because what you wrote is a completely new method. So it was a pretty strict and the love was surely over. And then in 2004, Kathy Chamas wrote a book on uh, constructivist grounded theory. So that's the third version. So we have Glazerian grounded theory, we have what is often called Straussian grounded theory, and we have constructivist grounded theory, as Kathy Chalmers and others uh, are suggesting. So let's look at these three different versions. The first version of grounded theory I would like to discuss is the version by Strauss and Corbin. Anselm Strauss and Juliet Corbin in the late 80s wrote several publications in which they proposed a form of grounded theory. And that form of grounded theory is pretty prescriptive. And we can easily recognize members of this school of grounded theory because many people that are influenced by Strauss and Corbin, they use Axial coding, as they call it. And this new book by Strauss and Corbin, this, this late 80s book, uh, had a very strong focus on procedures. And some would say it's a recipe book. Or Glazer calls it, well, it forces theory on data. And maybe it is, maybe it's not. But I will show you the procedures because they're really cool and really good in order to learn to think in a grounded theory manner. So what they suggested is different steps in coding. And the first step is open coding. So what you do when you do constant comparison, you compare a case with another case. You compare an interview with another interview and you start coding. You start scribbling down little notes in the margin. And what you code for are events, actions, or interactions. There's symbolic interactionism here. You try to develop concepts. So you read your text, you read your transcripts, you read your field notes, and then you write down these little notes, these little codes. And in order to do so, they suggest four guidelines. And the first is ask questions to your data. Because you can't go about and just code. No, you have, you have to ask specific questions and consistent questions to your data. And the second guideline is you have to be precise while coding. The third guideline is you have to write, you have to think about what you're doing. You have to think about the process you're in. And the fourth is 
you have to minimize your own assumptions. So you try to be as open as possible. Open-minded does not mean empty-headed, but you try to minimize your assumptions. So when you went about in, in coding, when you did all this coding, you reach a certain point where you have so many open codes, you, have, you need to organize them. And you organize them into categories. And then you try to link these categories to each other, but also to four specific properties. And these properties are conditions. So in what conditions does this behavior occur? In what context does this behavior occur? What are the consequences of a certain type of behavior? And what strategies are behind it? And what action and interaction strategies can I see in this? And here you, again you see a very clear mark of symbolic interactionism on this methodology. Action and interaction strategies. So symbols people use also in interactions. And you try to link these categories to each other. So what you do is you organize your codes into categories, you try to link properties to these categories, and then you try to link these categories to each other to create theorems, patterns, theses, whatever you like to call them, linkages. Now the third step in Strauss and Corbin is what they call selective coding. You select a certain core category. You try to integrate all your categories, relate and link them to each other and say, well, it's actually about this. And then this core category becomes the storyline of your theory. Now, the second version of grounded theory is the version by Barney Glazer. Glazer was pretty angry in the late 1980s, and sometimes he still is, about new forms or other forms of grounded theory. And he calls his form of grounded theory classical grounded theory. And the first adagium is all is data, anything you can use. So it's not grounded theory is not just a qualitative methodology, it's a methodology, which means you can use quantitative data and you can use anything. Anything could be considered as data. And Glazer says, well, it doesn't matter what methodology you use. And what Glazer also says is you do not need to transcribe all your interviews. You just make notes and that's enough. It's way less formalized as the Strauss and Corbin version. And he suggests 18 different coding families rather than actual coding. So he says, well, actual coding is one way to do your research, but there are 17 other ways and probably even more. So try to do those. And he focuses a lot on, as I said before, theoretical sensitivity. And it's much less formal. It's much freer. There's less of a recipe. And he's very strong with his language. For instance, he says this. Strauss' method of labeling and then grouping is totally unnecessary, laborious, and it's a waste of time. Using constant comparison methods gets the analyst to the desired conceptual power quickly, with ease and joy. Categories emerge upon comparison and properties emerge upon more comparison. And that's all there is to it. Do away with all the small steps. Just try to do constant comparison and theoretical sensitivity. The third version of grounded theory I would like to discuss is the version by Kathy Chalmers and others. And it's a constructivist version of grounded theory, taking into account the constructivist critique on mainstream research during the 80s and 90s. And what they say is the researcher is a co-constructor of meaning. So meaning is not objectively pulled out of people. No, it's co-constructed in interactions, for instance. And what she, she suggests is a combination of procedures by Glaser and Strauss. So there's a bit of open coding and a bit of actual coding in it. But at the same time, she's very open for constant comparison and theoretical sensitivity. 
and even more, because in constructivist grounded theory, there's more focus on context and complexity, and it's not as procedural as Strauss and Corbin, but it's also not as rigid focus on focusing on theoretical sensitivity as Glazer is. It's more like mainstream qualitative analysis. And it's focusing much more on description as well. And it gives the possibility of multiple meanings. So probably even multiple theories. You come across multiple theories rarely, but there are these possibilities that, well, if you construct it in this way, you can see it in this way. Whereas you, if you construct it from another viewpoint, you see it from another viewpoint. So again, whenever you write about grounded theory, at least tell where you stand. And you can stand within a school, within Strauss and Corbin school, within the Glazer school, within the Chalmers or constructivist school. But rather, I would suggest, write about your methodology in precise terms rather than broad categories such as I did grounded theory.